going on guys? I am Double Pulse and today we're going to be taking a look at the Backbone 1. As to why it's called the Backbone 1 on the website, I have no idea. It might be because that this is the one and only truly gaming controller you're going to need for your iPhone or the fact that they have two iterations of it now. As you see, I have the one that is all black. It's got the A, B, X, Y. There might be some people out there showing the all white one, which is similar to a DualSense controller, which is specifically for PlayStation layout. But this device has actually been a pretty handy controller to have. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I had this for about two years and it never really occurred to me to make a video on it until recently because as somebody who has a whole bunch of handhelds already, it never really made sense to buy one of these when I would just rather play games on those. But if you don't have any of those or you don't want to take your Switch around, I would probably recommend this particular controller. It's got the four uh, triggers on the back. The triggers actually do feel pretty good. Um, it's got your typical face buttons, your D-pad. The D-pad's okay. Um, the analog sticks feel very similar to the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons, with the exception that they do not have any of that Joy-Con drift that Nintendo is infamously known for. And it's got on the bottom the headphone jack and the lightning cable to charge your phone while you're playing it. And thank God they have the headphone jack because we all know that iPhones and every phone manufacturer decided to remove this. So what I wanna talk about is mostly these buttons on the side of the controller. But before that, I kinda wanna get into one of my first complaints with it. And it is the fact for you to use this controller, you may have to remove your phone case. I don't know of any phone case that's gonna be thin enough to work with this thing. So to kind of sum it up, right? The four buttons on here are pretty much this specifically made for the app that comes included with this device. So what you're gonna do is you're, you're gonna see this orange button right here and you're gonna hit it and it's gonna take you directly to the app. Now, I actually like this app a lot. It, it's very intuitive and it kind of gives you that console-like experience just on your phone. It seamlessly lets you connect to your PlayStation, your Xbox, and it has like a little video that pops up on the side showing you exactly what game it is. It shows you some featured stuff. And these are games that you can theoretically use this controller with and play any types of games. If you hit the side button right here, you'll notice on the side that they have a bit of social features. These social features essentially allow you to connect with friends and start a party or set up a room. I don't know anybody who uses this, so I've never really bothered with it. But what's cool is you can record and broadcast your games directly through this app. And it will save your gameplay footage on the actual app itself. So for instance, I had a couple videos that I recorded a while when I was playing games, such as um, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, Call of Duty, and it basically loads it up and you can, you're playing Call of Duty. So you can turn around and take this clip, share it directly to YouTube, but outside of that, this is pretty much what this device is capable of doing. So it wouldn't be a video if I did not show some sort of gameplay. So here is Drake's Fortune running through the PlayStation Remote app. As you see, the game looks pretty good and it plays relatively okay. Mind you, I am sitting right next to my PlayStation. But to kind of give you an idea, I have tested games like Elden Ring, I have tested games like Uncharted, Last of Us, and I've played both in proximity with my PlayStation and outside of the house. And I can say that this will definitely vary based off of your internet connection. So if you have your internet connection tethered to a Ethernet cable or Ethernet or however you want to say it, then you're probably going to have a better time. But if you're running through Wi-Fi and you're trying to play these titles, this probably wouldn't be very suitable unless you enjoy having lag spikes, but it varies based on the title. Now, as you see, this next one I'm going to be showing is some Xbox gameplay. Uh, Xbox Cloud Gaming is pretty much the same type of thing, with the only exception that you're not using your actual console to connect from, but rather you're connecting strictly from the cloud. So if you ever wanted to play Fortnite on your phone again, using a controller, you could definitely play Fortnite. 
I kind of suck at Fortnite, and I haven't played Fortnite in some time now. But you get the you get the whole point. Last but not least, any other type of iPhone title that you can run on here, controls are pretty much going to work right out the box. I'm playing a bit of Ocean Horn, Genshin Impact, and even Grand Theft Auto Liberty City Stories. And all these titles pretty much have controller support. Now, the last thing I want to bring up is the idea of mapping your controllers. Will mapping is possible. It's probably going to be on a game-by-game -game basis. None of the games that I actually play in this video or off-camera, I bothered changing up the controls or anything. I just kind of hooked it up and just played as it's meant to be and whatever came to it is just whatever came to it so yeah this pretty much concludes my thoughts on the backbone if it's something that you guys are interested in you can definitely pick it up on their website or on amazon for about a hundred dollars i really don't have any much thing else i need to add on this as i think it pretty much is self-explanatory if you guys enjoyed the video feel free to like comment and subscribe to the channel if you've got any questions or any other products you'd like me to take a look at leaving a comment definitely helps i'm double pulse and i am signing out